Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Peter Barrett, and what I'm going to present in the next hour is a one-hour presentation on ANSA Civil Fem, and with an emphasis on applications in the nuclear industry. So first, for those that aren't familiar, I'll give you a little background on our company, CA Associates. Uh, talk about the Civil Fem developer, Inca Cyber, and their relation with Civil Fem and then give you a brief overview of the full capabilities of the code, and then we'll get into the details of the nuclear applications. So CA Associates, we're in Middlebury, Connecticut. We have over 28 years experience doing consulting work in a large variety of areas, but we actually do quite a bit of work in the area of nuclear containments. Uh, we've done work for a number of the large companies in this area. Uh, we're one of the original ANSYS channel partners. Uh, we're one of the leaders in terms of finite element training. We do all the ANSYS training classes for GE, Pratt & Whitney, Sikorsky, a number of other comp large companies. We also do a lot of work in the civil applications. Uh, we've been marketing civil film for about five years, but we've actually been interacting with Inca Cyber, the developer, for close to 20 years. Just a brief background of some applications, some consulting work that uh, CA Associates has been involved with in the last few years in the civil structural applications in nuclear. Uh, we do a lot of work for the area of concrete containments, also new generation reactors. We've been involved with the, the, the uh, helping out on the ANSA side of uh, writing macros, uh, model generation, post-processing, convergence. Uh, and a number of other items. Other, other areas where we've done a lot of work, uh, probably the most uh, notable job was the structural collapse of the World Trade Center towers. Uh, we were heavily involved with teaching uh, our partners on how to use ANSYS and also providing guidance and support in that arena as well. In the area of, of nuclear power plants, uh, we have uh, a large background, including uh, previous experience, but some of our employees with Robert L. Cloud Associates, Anatech Research. Uh, actually, I was involved with the initial uh, independent design review of the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant uh, way back in the early 80s. Uh, recently, we've done a lot of work in the area of, of steam generator replacement, um, cast drop, uh, airplane impact, missile impact, uh, model generation, thermal stress applications, for instance, for a loss of coolant accident, uh, scripting. Uh, we've also written some macros to optimize the uh, definition of material properties, and done recently some full-time history earthquake simulations. And in regards to SOLFEM, uh, this is one of an ongoing series of webinars that we've been presenting. We also provide training, uh, mentoring, uh, basically any kind of help getting you up to speed in your ANSYS and SOLFEM applications. So what is SOLFEM? So SOLFEM is a pre- and post-processing and also solution module that integrates into the ANSYS mechanical finite element product. I actually can also interface into structural, but it interfaces into ANSYS. It uses the strengths of ANSYS uh, in terms of solver, in terms of nonlinear analysis capabilities, and integrates the strength of SOLFEM, which is in the area of automatic model generation, in the areas of material libraries, in the areas of code checking. Um, and so the integrated product provides a very robust, very strong product to analyze all kinds of different uh, civil engineering applications. And in particular, uh, what we're going to emphasize here, of course, is on the nuclear side. So who is Inca Cyber? Inca Cyber is the developer of SOLFEM. They are also an ANSYS channel partner, in fact, one of the original channel partners. Uh, Miguel Angel, the president of, of Civil Femme, actually used to work for Westinghouse back when John Swanson was working for Westinghouse. Uh, so they have a long-term relationship both in the ANSYS world but also in the nuclear engineering world as well. Uh, Inca Cyber has recently 
uh, passed a internal audit by Westinghouse. They've been approved by Areva in terms of QA. Uh, they are also ISO 9001 certified. So they have a very strong reputation, not only in their capabilities, but also in the QA environment, which is critical to the nuclear uh, engineering applications. So ANSYS, and combined with CivilFem, both products follow a similar trend in terms of the QA. Both are ISO 9000. Both satisfy all of the NRC regulations. Uh, CivilFem follows a similar procedure to ANSYS in terms of tracking uh, issues if there are problems or errors that are found in the code. And they are critical errors such that the error itself is not necessarily obvious, then these get reported uh, as class three errors. Uh, you get a class three error report similar to what you get with ANSYS. I uh, just showed an example, one on the bottom of the page. Applications for civil fem, uh, just very briefly before we get into the details of the nuclear applications, can uh, encompass a wide variety of industries uh, in the area of offshore, uh, in the area of dams, uh, tunneling, bridges, windmills, stadiums, uh, a large variety of different applications. Uh, again, the ability to automate the process in terms of model generation and code checking is something that gives civil fem a competitive advantage, especially linked to your ANSYS uh, product if you are a current ANSYS customer. I'm sure everybody's familiar with ANSYS, but just some a little bit of uh, tidbits of information. It's the world's largest simulation community. Uh, in addition to the ANSYS mechanical side, uh, now CFD capabilities are available with the acquisition of Fluent. ANSYS already had CFX internally, so now uh, combining those two very strong capabilities in terms of fluid structure interaction. And that's another application that can be used in conjunction with ANSYS and CivilFem. You can use CivilFem for model generation uh, that could be integrated into that type of simulation. So what are the strengths of ANSYS? The strengths of ANSYS include its nonlinear material capabilities, its ability for scalable size problems, multiple solvers, uh, very large memory requirements, iterative solvers, uh, a very large material library uh, in terms of capabilities such as creep, plasticity, uh, hyperelasticity, uh, the ability for element birth and death to simulate a construction sequence, the ability for ANSYS to uh, select from over 200 element types. And the strength of CivilFem is that you can use any ANSYS capability in a model where you're also including CivilFem. You may or may not use the specific ANSYS element type in conjunction with the CivilFem application. That's totally fine. You can have elements that, that aren't associated with code checking integrated with a model with elements that are associated with code checking. And you would just simply would perform the code checking on those elements where you've specified CivilFem type properties. Uh, analysis can be static. They can be dynamic. In terms of the nuclear side, you can do a response spectrum analysis in the frequency domain or full marching time history uh, analysis as well. Thermal stress applications are available uh, in the ANSYS product, and of course those are also the ability to use those with CivilFem is also available. So how do the two products talk to each other? They are fully integrated. So when you're running ANSYS CivilFem, you're actually running a uh, modified executable of ANSYS where the ANSYS uh, full capabilities are incorporated into a new executable that's been linked in with the CivilFem functionality. So CivilFem has linked in routines that are compiled software. It also has uh, entities that have been scripted into the uh, GUI on the front end and back end as well. CivilFem keeps track of its own database. So there's the ANSYS database for nodes, elements, displacements, stresses, strains. There's the CivilFem database on the front end for the particular code that you've just selected, 
any kind of unique section information that might be relevant for the code check operation, um, among other things. On the post-processing side, when we go to do, perform the code check evaluation, uh, the data required in terms of code evaluation is also stored in the Sewell Film database. So we'll have an ANSYS database on the front end as well as a Sewell Film database on the front end and then on the back end as well we'll have an ANSYS results file and a Sewell Film results file. And the two talk to each other. In terms of the input, and everything is command driven. So if you look in the bottom we have the tilde CFMP that is particularly the civil fem material property command, which allows you to define the civil fem material properties. So if you're familiar with ANSYS and you know the value of scripting and input files, civil fem follows the same functionality, only each civil fem command has a tilde in front of it. If you're familiar with the ANSYS uh, graphical user interface, you know it's in the lower left-hand corner, it shows on the main menu an option that says Civil Fem, Civil Fem Setup, Civil Fem Preprocessing, Solution Post Processing. So Civil Fem is fully integrated into the ANSYS GUI. You have full functionality of all the ANSYS features with the added ability to include the Civil Fem features as required. Similar to ANSYS, Civil Fem has a large amount of data and resources for your particular applications in terms of documentation. They have online help. You can type help comma the command to access the help for a particular op option. They also have PDF file documentation and searchable files in terms of examples. And they also have a series of problems. They have uh, what are consistent with uh, full-scale examples where they walk you through step-by-step, click-by-click in the menu. And then uh, some more verification type problems where they're a little more advanced applications and they provide the input script that runs that particular operation. So the first thing you'll notice from SoulFem is when you start up SoulFem, you're going to define your own setup of a particular unit system you're going to run in and a particular code that you're going to be evaluating with. Uh, not a requirement, but but usually that's the first step. So once you set up and decide you're going to use, for instance, uh, if we're doing in the nuclear ACI 349, uh, we specify that as our uh, code check, maybe specify English units for the unit system. Then when we go into material property definition, we're going to define a series of information about the analysis itself. So for instance, modulus, elasticity, Poisson's ratio, density, but also then uh, design specific information for the particular code check we've selected. So if, for instance, it's an ACI 359 where there are specifications unique to that particular code, you would enter that into the material data. And these material libraries can either be built-in material libraries or they can be libraries that you will actually define on your own. They can be linear material properties or nonlinear material properties. Uh, User-defined creep laws, for instance, uh, shrinkage, time-dependent response, all those are available within the Civil Fem material library. So one of the most common material, uh, time-dependent material library uh, resources that are used is in the area of creep and shrinkage. So in creep and shrinkage for concrete, you can either define this as a combination of elastic strains, creep strains, and shrinkage strains by simulating this with an equivalent modulus if you want to run a linear analysis or you can run a time marching analysis and calculate those incrementally. Another strength of the capability is in the area of uh, section design. Internal to Silfem is a large library of different material shapes, uh, steel I-beams, channels, etc. cetera, um, specific shapes for different industries, and the bridge design, for instance, a whole series of shapes, frames that can be defined, and user-defined composite sections. So you can create a built-up section of a slab with the series of I-beams underneath it, for example, shown here. And each of these Entities that you create can be stored in a library for use later on down the road. 
Uh, I have a question that says, how is the solid 65 element used, utilized for the section design? The solid 65 element can be used in uh, Silofem. Silofem gives you the ability to define the actual material properties. It also gives you kind of a template for defining the material properties. If you're looking for, if you run a nonlinear analysis, an incremental solution, you can model with the solid 65 element and ANSYS concrete uh, cracking and crushing. So you would model a representation of the cracking, cracking and crushing. That information, the force and moments that come out of there, uh, can be used in the code check evaluation. Um, so you can run a nonlinear analysis, and, and then you can take the force and moment, equivalent force and moment that comes out of that into the code check. Uh, whether that's explicitly what you're looking for, uh, we can talk offline. Uh, just briefly, uh, outside of the scope of the nuclear, we can use the SUVLFEM uh, functionality for automatic loading, for instance, in uh, traffic loads on bridges. Uh, one thing more relevant to the nuclear industry is for uh, either pre-stressed or very commonly post-tensioned uh, concrete structures. The post-tensioned concrete uh, can be defined with Sulfem's uh, cabling capabilities. Uh, you, spe you can specify the loss in the cable. You specify the end restraints. You specify the loss based on the, the distance from the attachment point. Uh, the angle and distance, the wobble factor, are all included in the calculation. And one of the beauties is the layout of the cables doesn't have to align with the finite element mesh. So for very complex structures, you lay out a cable system. Uh, so we'll, then we'll take those cable loads and interpolate them onto the closest elements and apply an equivalent force uh, such that you create the loading from the post-tension cables without having to have the final element mesh explicitly line up with the cable paths. Uh, we'll get into some more detail on the code checking capabilities as we go along, in, in, but this is just showing a couple examples, showing B moment diagrams, showing a interaction diagram that can be created, as well as those combinations. Other capabilities in SOLFEM include the ability to model uh, incremental construction, uh, a couple examples here showing a bridge and tunneling, but that can be applied to any, any uh, uh, application, can be applied to the um, in the area of a construction season for, for a nuclear containment building, for example. Seismic analysis capabilities, uh, response spectrum, and uh, pushover simulations, as well as full-time history capabilities, all of these are accessible in ANSYS, but CivilFEM aids in terms of the front end and back end in terms of setting up these models and post-processing. I mentioned the ability for tunnels, ability for bridge design, and these I'm going to just skip over quickly in the other webinars where we talk about bridge. Obviously, we spend a lot of time talking about all of the feature functionalities in this module. One of the other strengths of CivilFEM is the geotechnical material library. Uh, there's a whole series of materials available. You can define uh, the material properties in terms of analogies, analogous such as a standard penetration test and have it internally compute a structural properties for analysis. Uh, you can have nonlinear materials. You can uh, uh, develop failure uh, based on various uh, different um, formula in terms of like rock failure or soil um, cohesion uh, inputs. So there's a whole series of capabilities in the front end in terms of geotechnical uh, modeling, modeling piles, modeling um, uh, a foundation excavation sequence using birth and death capabilities as well. So in the nuclear power uh, module, uh, we get the capability of, in addition to all of the general features of civil fem, we also get the capability for uh, doing code checks with some of the uh, specific nuclear codes as well as the full quality assurance package. Uh, 
applications in terms of uh, some more details on the uh, capabilities in the nuclear field, uh, what I want to talk about a little bit is um, how do we go about code checking 3D models, uh, especially very large models. One approach is using a sub-modeling approach. Uh, how do we take data from uh, 3D continuum elements and turn this into something we can uh, perform code checking on in terms of a, an entire wall or entire surface. Uh, we can use what's called the solid to shell processing, um, and as well as some of the post processing. And then I have a couple example problems demonstrating uh, the use of Civil Fem with the ACI 349, 359, and the steel check as well. So, what is submodeling? Submodeling is we're going to complete create a totally independent model, but it's going to sit in the same location in global space, and we're going to assume St. Finance principle, so that where we take this cut, this boundary, is far enough away from the uh, critical areas, and we're going to map from the global model uh, displacements and uh, possibly temperatures such that we can compute a local response. Uh, there's an example shown in the lower right-hand corner showing the opening of the containment building where the uh, geometry paths of the tendons that go around the opening are very complicated, not uh, advantageous to a full 3D model of the entire building. But with a su sub-model, we can capture the local detailed response by modeling this local region. Uh, we can use a tetrahedron-based mesh and uh, capture the local response around the opening. Another example here is a large scale model of an entire uh, nuclear island. Uh, from this, we can pull out displacement response at particular regions. Uh, those particular regions or floors, uh, then we can take and create a refined model of that area and then map the displacements from the global model onto the local model. Now with the local model, now we can capture much higher resolution in terms of the uh, local stress response, and we can perform our detailed code check or code design evaluation at this point. So if we looked at kind of a general procedure, the global model could be run in ANSYS and wouldn't necessarily even have to have Civil Fem active. We can build a local model we specify our unit systems, our code checking, material input, uh, build the geometry or import the geometry from the global model, apply all the global loads and local loads, and then post-process, we we'll run the simulation of just the local region, post-process with uh, Civil Fem and or ANSYS. So we can look at some results in just in ANSYS, we can look at some results in Civil Fem. For 3D solid models, so we have a brick finite element model, and we want to do a code check evaluation with that. And this is something we could use on the really any element type, so we could actually use this on the solid 65 elements as well. Uh, the 3D model is going to include a uh, finite element mesh that could be a tapered section. It could be meshed with all tetrahedron elements. We're going to take that and create an equivalent plane where we can then impose our code checking feature functionality. Uh, option B is capturing a 3D section where we can take a, a slice through our model at any point and pull onto that slice. We can look at the displacement stresses, strains in the concrete, as well as if it's a composite section, we can look at the results in the rebar as well. So if we look at the solid to shell mapping, uh, the way this works is allows us to take a 3D model and map, create an equivalent shell with an equivalent force and moment distribution in that shell. So the 3D model is taken as input. We select the, uh, using select logic and ANSYS, the group of elements that make up the solid, the group of nodes that make up the top surface, and uh, Civil Fem will automatically create the mid-plane surface as well as the equivalent thicknesses. So it'll turn this model, which is a global 3D solid model, into a shell finite element model. If we turn on the shapes 
of the shell element, we see that we have captured correctly the various different thicknesses. Now that we have the a equivalent shell model, now we can take advantage of all of the internal code checking capabilities within Solfilm. So the shell element model is created at that midplane. The thicknesses are pulled off from the global model. And then the results from the global analysis, taking the actual stresses uh, at the integration points through the actual 3D solid elements, and integrating those to create the equivalent shell response. So the shell response is the equivalent of integrating through the, th the section to get the equivalent uh, shear moment uh, values, both in plane and out of plane. And it's relatively straightforward to implement this. It's just there's a single command syntax. This is just showing also an example of a syntax of a command in Sulfam, the tilde s solid to shell, SD2SH, and where we're going to specify the nodes and elements that make up. We're also going to specify our uh, reinforcement cover. Uh, uh, it's in terms of when we're doing a code check evaluation, we need to know uh, the layout of the reinforcement, at least the cover. And we can have the program compute how much reinforcement is required to meet the particular design requirement. Um, based on that particular um, reinforcement material and cover. So for the shell sections, uh, we can specify either specify a thickness, have ANSYS compute the thickness, uh, reinforcement uh, from bending response uh, in the two orthogonal directions, the X and Y, as well as shear reinforcement inputs. And this capability, not only is it available with the 3D solid brick type elements, it can also be used with tetrahedron elements. So what we're doing is we're capturing an equivalent 2D section. And with that 2D section now, we can map on results and perform a design simulation. So if we're mapping on results, we're simply plotting results. We can use the ANSYS capabilities with the shape and size turned on. For instance, on the left-hand side here, we're plotting the um, max principal stress in the shell with the shell thickness variable turned on. And then the other three, three images show, for instance, bending moment, shear loads, axial force entities. Uh, those entities are graphed on the shell. And you also see in the lower right-hand corner, it gives a representation of the orientation of those particular um, magnitudes of load. So now that we've taken this data from the 3D brick model, turned it into equivalent forces and moments in a shell model, now we can do either a check where we're going to just say that we've already specified the reinforcement and we're going to check based on that reinforcement, or we can do a design by code. So we can say, have the code automatically figure out how much reinforcement is required. So as an input parameter, the user can specify either an um, a average amount of um, reinforcement, or you can specify it in details. And again, we can specify the, the bending reinforcement and shear reinforcement. And all the things you see here that are GUI-driven are also driven by commands. So where it may make sense to do small models interactively for large models, you do it in batch mode. You can take advantage of the ANSA scripting, so you can create do loops, if then else. Uh, you can create array variables. Anything that you could do in ANSA for automation, you can do in civil film. So selected the code particular we're going to uh, design by. Here now, this example here, we're showing where their reinforcement uh, is uh, the amount of reinforcement for unit length is defined in the x direction and y direction. Um, one for the bottom face, both of these are for the bottom face of that particular slab. As an alternative, we can also perform the code checking on a, on a 3D section, 3D slice at any point in our model. So the first method was going to take the entire slab or the entire wall. The second method is taking a section where the requirement is, is that you have 
a set of nodes that you can use to define that cross-section. So if we have a set of nodes that define the cross-section, we will then specify that section of nodes uh, will, will want, based on the section or subgrid of no, uh, nodes and the elements on one side, SILFEM will determine the section properties and it can take the results from the global analysis at that section and interpolate and calculate the local stress distribution forces and moments on that particular section. If we're taking this solid section, we want to look at the uh, reinforcement. We can look at just by a, a physical ratio, by a, uh, or an area and distance, so there's a, a particular cover, or we can specify explicitly we want uh, X number of bars at a certain spacing. Once we've specified that, we go through and perform the code check evaluation. We can look at just a graphical representation of which element pass and fail, or we can also look at the utilization, so anything over one is not meeting the particular criterion. Moving on to post-processing, we can look at both general results. Uh, we can also perform load case combinations and envelopes. And any data you capture or compute, you can also export that data uh, via arrays to ASCII files, or you can export them actually directly into Excel. So some of just examples of the post-processing available in CivilFem. You can plot shear moment diagrams. You can plot contours of various stress components. Uh, you can plot interaction diagrams, pass-fail, uh, as well as listing all of this data. You can also perform time history type solutions and create logic to export that data over time. Uh, you can create uh, any number of feature functionalities to automate the process of either just doing an analysis evaluation or actually doing design. When it comes to load case combinations, if it's a linear analysis or it's something where you can use superposition, uh, you can specify various load factors and not only can you explicitly model or calculate the load factors based on predefined applications, you can also have SUFM compute the worst possible scenario of load combinations. So for example, you can specify that the gravity load can range from 1 to 1.35, the live load can range from a factor of 1 to 0, and you can take this and say which load factor is going to create the maximum moment at this particular section of my model. And then it'll give you the corresponding values for at that location with the max moment, it'll tell you what the shear and axial loads are as well. So load combinations, we can specify particular targets, such as a moment shear, stress at a certain location. We can set up various combination rules. The coefficients that we use in the combination can be variable. We can say that some of these constants are fixed. Maybe the dead load coefficient is fixed but some of the live load coefficients are variable. And this is a very strong capability. Uh, it's used a lot in the area of uh, bridge design, looking at the variations in all the different vehicle load combinations. But it could also, the same procedure could be applied to any uh, application, including uh, various parts of the nuclear power plant. There is a wizard, a load combination window, where you can drag and drop your combinations, or again, you can write them with scripted input files. Code checking capabilities, talked a little about the ACI codes in terms of the nuclear, which is really the emphasis of this particular webinar, but of course, there are a large variety of different codes available within SUFM, uh basically all over the world. When we go to the point of the design operations, we really have two, two choices. We can perform a code checking where we're specified reinforcement, or we can do a code design where it's going to calculate the amount of reinforcement required to meet as close as possible a safety factor of 
for these particular design operations, we can either perform these on beam element results, and the beam element results could also be, for instance, a slice or 3D section, or shell element results, where the shell element results can also be a 3D model where we created the equivalent shell. The code checking is a combination of extracting data from the ANSYS database as well as the Civil Fem database, the ANSYS results file as well as the Civil Fem results file. And these particular operations can be performed, again, interactively or in a batch mode. The envelopes look at a subset of data, uh, basically a homogeneous uh, code check capability in a particular application of interest, for instance, maximizing uh, the moment or stress. Uh, and so we can look at uh, taking that data, doing an envelope operation, find the worst case scenario for that particular uh, load combination. So I've mentioned this before, and here's an example of taking the scripting capability within SULFEM and leveraging that uh, in as well as the ANSYS scripting. So in this particular option, we have, there's a tilde CF VGET, which allows us to extract a whole array of information. So if we're, in this particular example, we're looking at the uh, reinforcement in the X direction, we can pull this data and write a little script that'll uh, export the data directly and take that data directly into Excel. AECI 349, um, and all the code checked have specific particular requirements. Uh, those input requirements are specified uh, up front uh, in the material information, and then the particular requirements uh, on the code check, for instance, the um, in this case, the scaling factor and load factor is a function of the amount of strain in the steel, and those can be are automatically evaluated by uh, Silverfoam. So the material input, again, I showed some examples of this. I'm going to skip through this. And this is just showing that the strength reduction factor uh, is calculated based on the strain and the rebar automatically by silver film. And the corresponding shear moment or axial force and moment diagram. Uh, and from this, we compute where we're at relative to the uh, strength of the section. And also, we look at the relative ratio of where we are, and there so we can compute our safety factor, or our utilization. So we're at 0.82 utilization in this example. Shear and torsion response uh, also can be evaluated based on the ACI 349 uh, code requirements. Uh, if you go into help in Civil Fem, there's details on each of the different codes that are available, and the particular uh, code equations that are evaluated by civil film. So, in the remaining uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, I have a couple example problems. Here is a slab uh, with a series of steel beams around the outside and several columns. If I'm going to run a code check evaluation of this particular example using ACI 349, the first step is to specify the unit system that I'm going to run in. So in the unit system, I'm going to specify, in this case, this is meters, seconds, and kilonewtons. Select the particular code that I'm going to use to evaluate. Uh, and all of these options are uh, available directly in the Civil Fem input script. So in this case, I'm looking at ASME uh, for the steel, ACI for reinforced concrete, ACI 359 for pre-stress, and if I was doing a seismic evaluation, in this case, Caltrans. So they don't necessarily can be mixed and match in terms of which codes you select. Next step is to find material properties. Material properties for the concrete, for the rebar, and for the um, uh, for the general steel beams and also for the reinforcement. So you notice that the material library here has an option for concrete, steel, and reinforcement. To find the section properties along with the reinforcement and their cover and so on. So there's reinforcement in the beam col the, the columns. There's also reinforcement in the shell. So we can define the shell response, uh, various different uh, member properties. 
And these are similar to the options you set up in ANSYS if you were using traditional ANSYS where you're setting up material properties, element types, real constants, material properties. In terms of geometry generation, uh, you can use some of the built-in modules in SOLFEM or you can just use the ANSYS uh, mode of generating geometry, boundary conditions, loads. Run the analysis and go to the post-processing. If we're going to do a design iteration, we may have, in this case, two different loading cases. There's a load step one, which is self-weight and overload. There's a load step two, uh, self-weight and lateral load. And then in terms of the design operation, if you uh, let some of them go through a whole series of different design alternatives, in this case it ran 15 different perturbations from that, figured out which particular scenario is the worst case scenario for uh, whatever particular application I was trying to, to compute for that example. Here's, an, here's some response to some results showing the axial forces in the members uh, under the overload. Here's an example where we can take a section view and pull off the forces and moments of the entire section, as well as we can plot the stresses both in the rebar, the steel, and also in the concrete. And that's just an example of some of the post-processing include the, the design uh, operation where the design matches the amount of rebar and sets it equal to 1.0 in terms of the uh, meeting the design requirement for the slab in this case for the uh, X direction um, reinforcement on the lower portion of the slab. And that's just an interaction diagram example as well. For the pre-stressed concrete code check evaluation, uh, the ASME uh, code section 3 division 2 or ACI 359 as it's sometimes referred to, uh, a subset of capabilities are available in SOLFEM for evaluating radial tangential shear, flexial and axial force. SOLFEM program will go in and compute the allowable stress based on the particular load category, factored loads versus service loads. Uh, and so if we take an example here, here is a very simplified concrete containment building. Uh, we're showing the tendon layout as well as the finite element mesh. You notice that the shell mesh of the building doesn't match the layout of the tendons. The tendon loads are going to be computed from the um, the tendons itself and translated over to the solid, or translated in this case over the shells. This could be either shells or solids. So just some example excerpts from the input. We specify again uh, the particular code, uh, turn on the pre-stress module, specify material properties for concrete reinforcing and also for the pre-stressing steel, uh, set up various different properties. Uh, here's an example using the ANSYS scripting in conjunction with the section input for SOLFEM. So the tilde SOLFEM for defining the section is embedded in a do loop where the script I sections or sequences through and you can see we have a section defined of uh, the solid section and we're using the uh, some of the ANSYS scripting capabilities to update the section name as we go through the different sections. And there's detailed help in terms of how to define the tendon shapes. Uh, there's also a tendon editor to visually see what the tendon layout looks like as well as defining them explicitly. But I find that I tend to do this more in a batch and scripting mode. In terms of the post-tension capability, we can look at the losses in the tendons themselves, the losses uh, from a pre-stress uh, perspective uh, due to stress relaxation, thermal uh, expansion, slippage, and elastic shortening. If we're looking at post-tensioning, we're looking at the losses due to friction, due to slippage, and due to elastic shortening. And it's just showing an example of one of the commands within civil family documentation. This in this case, this PCTNDEF is for defining and inserting a tendon. Uh, also, you notice that there's options here in terms of code-related input. 
Also listed here or shown in the figure are the forces that were generated based on the tendons. So the tendons are modeled as the link elements. Their forces are captured. Those forces are transmitted over to, in this case, the shell elements at the appropriate nodes. And if there's nodes don't line up explicitly with the tendon, uh, the closest nodes are captured and an equivalent couple is created to create that equivalent load. Uh, just an example from this solution, there was a uh, code check evaluation to determine the amount of reinforcement required in the X direction on the bottom surface of the wall. Uh, data, in addition to being uh, graphically displayed, you can list out data, and as I said, you can export this data to spreadsheets, etc. And then the final example is showing uh, just a couple uh, applications of the uh, structural steel nuclear code. So in this case, we're looking at the N690 and the options available in terms of code checking include tension, bending, shear force, uh, axial compression combined with bending as well as tension and bending and uh, flexure and torsion. Uh, we look at compact and non-compact slenderness ratios. So as part of the input in terms of the data, again, you're going to input material data, either select a material from a library. You're going to also specify code-specific data, and that would be, for instance, the, the uh, for a buckling type evaluation, you would specify the unsupported length. So the if it's a direct code check evaluation, we're going to use specify the code utilization, so we're going to go through, define the computed stress based on the design stress and give you a utilization uh, based on those. So if we take a simple example here, uh, a truss load in the middle, support on the two ends. If we run through this, uh, in particular, a uh, that loading case, uh, we can pull off for each particular member its forces and shears and bending. We can perform a uh, classification in terms of is it a compact or non-compact sections. Uh, we can then evaluate them based on the code and determine which the members pass and which ones don't and what's their utilization factor. And finally, uh, just for your own reference, uh, as part of what we did on the World Trade Center application, we do have available um, basically on a on a model by model basis, the ability to convert final element models uh, developed in SAP into ANSYS. If you have any models you would like to try that out on, we'd be more than happy to do that. And this concludes this webinar. This is one of a series of webinars uh, that we've been doing on ANSYS SimulFem. Uh, in August, we'll start over again basically with the overview once a month roughly. Uh, each of these webinars. We also have uh, civil thumb training in October in our office as well as we often do uh, training on site if a customer has a need. So I'm going to have Christina open up the phone lines if anybody has any particular questions or if anybody wants to ask any questions in the chat.